But I was in the middle of a corral. I was within uh, probably a hundred feet or so of any kind of escape route. I had no stick with me, just me, myself, and this big bull. His eyes went big. He arched his neck. He showed me his side and he arched his neck like this, this is how big I am. I am big and powerful, intimidating. Do not come near me. A couple years ago, we did something scary. We bought our first cow. This is Ladybug. She's our Jersey. She's a cow that we have for milk. She's pregnant right now. She's due to calf in November. She's a mid-sized Jersey, which is a perfect size for our homestead. She'll give enough milk for our family with plenty of extra to use to feed the pigs, give to the chickens, use in the garden, make cheese with, endless possibilities of how we can use the milk here. And I will never forget the feeling I had uh, when that cow showed up that first day. I had never been around cows. It felt like that velociraptor scene at the introduction of Jurassic Park. And I just hoped I wasn't gonna end up like that one guy. Shoot her! <laughs> Now Kay was much better. She grew up around large livestock and she wasn't as scared as I was. She had done her research. Many of you can see on the channel she's a more natural with livestock and she was ready for this. She had grown up with horses, she had grown up with all kinds of animals and she was not nearly as worried as I was. I was a nervous Nelly as Ladybug was brought onto the property and unloaded and that took a while for me to get over. I wasn't the one who was interacting her, with her every day, so it was all right. Uh, but over the last couple of years, I have got a lot more confidence around our cows. Another time. Oh, hi. You came over to say hi, Luna. Flies still bugging you, hon? Oh, look at those flies, man. Nice flies. Let's say hi to Luna. I'll, I'll see her. Hey. And now I actually find them to be one of my favorite animals on the homestead. We really have become very pro-cow for homesteaders. Uh, suggesting that if you're thinking about getting into milk, uh, that might be a better first selection, a better first animal uh, than even a goat, if you are ready to handle and work with an animal. And we have a guest here with us tonight who is going to talk all about working with cattle, whether that be dairy cows, uh, whether it be working around bulls and uh, beef animals, uh, so we're really, I'm looking forward to this interview because I'm going to certainly get some pointers and tips on how I can be better around our cows. Uh, Ladybug's a mini Jersey. People would laugh if they knew how scared I was of this small sized cow. But even Ladybug uh, has an incredible amount of power. Uh, we were talking about it before the show. Kay and I, she's blind in the one eye, which that added a whole new set of challenges. Sometimes when she whips her head back to swat flies, you got to make sure you're not standing there. So we have a guest tonight. Her name is Karen. And she is going to help us navigate the world of handling and working with cattle. Karen grew up on a mixed family farm in Alberta, Canada, growing barley and canola, raising and selling backgrounding stocker steers. Her main passion since she was little was the cattle end of the farming operation. From handling to pasture management, she has a BSc in agriculture from the University of Alberta, majoring in animal science, with an unofficial minor in rangeland, forage, and pasture management. Uh, one of the things you find me and Karen talking a lot in the comments section of our YouTube channel is uh, moving the animals on grass and feeding the animals. Uh, she has worked as a general veterinarian assistant, a farm store sales rep, and as a research assistant for rangeland research and crops and soils research with the University of Alberta. She currently works as a forage beef extension specialist with the provincial government and is working towards getting into farming of her own one day. She calls herself one of those wannabe farmer types, which I find is funny because I would look at Karen as an expert farmer type, not a wannabe any day. Uh, even though her passion for all things bovine, forages, rangeland, and agriculture has been alive and well since the day she was born. This passion is transformed into one of sharing of information on agriculture to all those who are interested, no matter if they're veteran farmers or those just eager to always learn more like herself. Uh, Karen is a wealth of knowledge 
on this subject. We're going to be able to dive into it, ask her plenty of questions about managing cattle. So Karen, I'd like to welcome you onto the Homesteady Show. Karen's a longtime commenter on the channel. You'll know, some of you will know her as Karen L. If you're a regular in the comments section, you'll see her there. And right out the gate, uh, Kay and I knew from Karen's comments, right away we could tell she was experienced. Uh, she wasn't just talking book knowledge, but we could tell she had boots on the ground knowledge. She's always, she's not always agreed with some of the things we've done, which I have no problem with. I love when people show me what we're doing wrong or, you know, share what we're, what we could change, but she's always handled it super classy. And I talked to her not too long ago. One of her comments was so good. I said, Karen, you got to come on the show. She said, I'd love to. So Karen, you're on the show. Welcome. Oh, thanks for having me. Sure. Thanks for coming on Homesteady. And uh, I want to dive into this subject, Karen, because I know sure. from being on the other end, you grew up with this. I didn't. Mm -hmm. Cows scared me. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like? Just give us a little bit of your background, Karen, growing up around these animals. What was life on your family farm like? Oh, boy. It was adventurous, just to put it in one word. <laughs> <laughs> It was, it's, it's an experience of a, of a, uh, of, 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 I guess a kind of a lifetime. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where it teaches you values that you, you just don't get anywhere else. Uh, it teaches you responsibility, teaches you hard work, uh, all, all sorts of things. Working with, with cattle, I mean, that was, uh, there's a picture of, of my mom and my brother out in the pasture and mom's super pregnant with with me in the womb and they're out pit checking pasture so you could probably say that the passion has been even before i was born <laughs> <laughs> so so it's been it's 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 been since uh since even then but yeah it's it's uh it's just something that i i just love and it's it's in the blood did you grow up you had what kind of cattle, how many was on the family farm growing up? Average is about 80, 80 to 90 stalker steers, which is actually pretty small. What we did was actually, uh, it's a bit different from feedlot versus the cow-calf operation where we get the steers from a cow-calf operation. We, we fed them up during the winter time and it was, winter time was mainly with hay, silage, uh, and a little bit of grain if, if necessary. And then we throw them out in the pasture come usually by May, May or June is when we throw them out to pasture and then they'd be out, out there till, till September when they get sold. So you yeah. had from, I mean, like you said, your mom was pregnant from just start forward, you were around large groups of cattle. Yeah. Like there's a picture of me. I was probably three years old. I had, I made, <laughs> it's funny, I actually made this cardboard box where I could put my little ponies in, <laughs> in there. There's a picture of me playing with my little ponies just feet away from these big steers and their steers are staring down at me like this. <laughs> you wonder what the heck I'm doing. And I was just absolutely just oblivious. But, you know, that's just what I grew up with. It was. Hey, why cows and cattle? Why is this the thing that you just attach to? And why would somebody want to consider raising some of these animals on their own homestead? Uh, there is a pile of reasons. One, one is that there are some of the best uh, green solar panel converting ruminants that you could ever you could ever have. They're the proxy for the old bison herds that that are I wouldn't say non-existent because they're they're still around, but it's just there's not enough of them like. Right. People like to romanticize, oh, we should have all these bison and all that. But, you know, we have a lot of cattle and, and the cattle are, are such great converters of, of grass to something that's edible, meat and milk. I mean, what, what, what better could you ask for? The other thing is that they are, cattle are, a, a, they're kind of an animal that is, <sighs> there's a certain prestige about them. The old Maasai in Kenya, Zimbabwe, they 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 value the cow as a meaning of 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 how rich you are. So the more cows they have, the more the richer you are. 
I can and, see uh, why they're expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and and so it's it's that kind of prestige, but it's just it's just they they kind of look at you like they they look at you like nothing like horses, nothing like dogs or cats can look at you. They kind of look into your soul. For me, they they speak they speak a different language. They I, I hate to I don't want to put any human qualities to them, but like like they just know what's on your mind <laughs> <laughs> and I've grown up you know growing up around cattle uh, all this it's it's they've taught me a whole lot about me about about them and so many people out there that don't even know what cows that cows are actually smarter than they than you think <laughs> they're smarter than they're just a ribeye <laughs> <laughs> smarter than you, have you know ribeye. why would someone who like myself, maybe was nervous about it. Maybe it's a couple and one of them is thinking about bringing some cattle onto the homestead. Why would someone want to consider raising them? That goes back to that meat and milk thing. And plus, plus, you know, it's the, uh, the ability for them to have, have that ability to convert grass to, to milk. I mean, the thing is, is that goats are certainly, certainly a, a, a good, or even sheep are, are great, uh, replacement I guess you could say if you don't have enough land but <laughs> but uh, <laughs> why someone would would consider having a cow I think it's just kind of kind of goes back to you know what whether they actually like like the meat better like the milk better because some people don't like goat's milk some people don't even know that sheep milk even exists or that <laughs> they don't even like it so it's it's actually down to more of a personal preference thing you know what and even if they if they like dealing with these large animals these large ruminants and you know it, it's it's uh i i guess it that's what it's down to is is what a person actually prefers i i f have found i was known as a goat hater for a long time and uh, when we got goats again on the property i, I got a lot of uh a lot of comments on YouTube because I actually decided after telling so many people for so long, don't bother, don't bother. They're the worst. We wound up having them. And I still think they're the worst. <laughs> I'm not lying. I think goats are, I wrestle with those yeah. animals and care for those yeah. animals. They're just a headache. I love them. This group that we have right now, I'm having so much fun, you know, working with them. They have such personality. But at the end of the day, uh, they are they are harder. Those smaller goats are harder to fence than the cows they're the harder mm -hmm. ones to contain they're harder to train they're and and again every you know you can find an individual animal that's gonna buck the trend uh, but as a generality i find goats are a more difficult animal and the product that you get i do not like goat's milk more than cow's milk we ladybug's milk for us is it's the best milk we can possibly get we've come around to this feeling over the last couple of years of doing the homestead dairy if you're looking to be self-sufficient if you're looking to get the most you can with the least amount of inputs it mm -hmm. is really hard to beat a cow because she can that one cow a dairy cow can turn that grass a, a good pasture she can turn a good pasture into milk and she can do meat too and the milk from the cow can get turned into butter you can't really do that with the goat you can get a separator and go through all this extra work and but but it just doesn't work out that way it doesn't really work easily uh and the cream and all the things you can do with that cow maybe look to the cow because goats are a lot of work and a lot of maintenance and a lot of stress and you might burn out where one small sized you know manageable dairy like our mini jersey might be such a nice experience you might just really enjoy that so if a person hears us say that and thinks you know what i that might be for me maybe i should forget the goats and the headache that they bring maybe i should go get the cow what are some things that a person should know before getting into cattle karen the main thing that a person should know is that they they're big animals there's, there's no doubt about that they can be very intimidating i think it's just that intimidation factor with, with their size it's that thing is that you really gotta gotta keep in mind because people can think they think oh they're just like a big great dane no they're not <laughs> <laughs> not unless you get like a really mini cow 
then no. But uh, the other th the other thing is that you know, before you gotta get a cow, you gotta make sure you got your fencing and your your watering and your feed up because there's nothing worse than coming, bringing a cow home and then all of a sudden you're scrambling to get get that fencing in order, get that get that water in place and get that feed. The yeah, the main thing, and this comes comes back from when we brought home our, our steers every year, we bring home new steers, is that those animals, they need a time to uh, to get used to the place. Because when they come home, they're wondering, where am I? What what, what am I doing here? And, and they're going to be, if you don't confine them in, they could be wandering around and you could, <laughs> they, they could be potentially try and, and find their way back home <laughs> even though you don't want them to so having so having them in a in a uh, a corral where where it's uh i prefer be like something like a steel steel panels are good you know something that they're not going to easily break out of because they will break out if if they find a hole <laughs> they can squeeze through or or even a short not like some breeds are just notorious for jumping. I, I, I don't want to get into that, but that's <laughs> a cross of mine. We dealt with some, some different interesting cattle, but they have to stay, should be staying in that fence, not just for a day. It'll take three or three weeks, three to four weeks at least for them to, to get used to start settling down, to stop pacing, to just, you know, just go back to get, get to eating that, that kind of thing. Um, the other thing is that people I've noticed in a lot of farms, if the cattle farms, uh, keeping keeping a family count, even backyard herds farms, is that people are wondering why why is why can't I get close to these cows? Why can't I get get to to petting them and that? And and the main reason is that they're not used to you. You have to you have to really be patient to get them used to you, and. That's super important, and the only way you can do that is by patience, persistence, being tenacious about it, and just just having having the patience. I keep going back to that. Patience is is so important because all it takes is just hanging out with them, just having a book, getting your getting your favorite lawn lawn chair, and just sitting out with them and reading reading to them out loud, or just just being or just quiet like and and so that they they see you they smell you they realize you're not a threat and and then they start getting to know you the other thing too is if if you can bribe them a little bit with some feed that would be that would be great too <laughs> then they start associating you with with good things because that's really important they got to associate you with with good things not bad things because if they associate you with bad things they're heading for the hills they you're not, you're not going to be it, you're not going to be. Uh, you're going to be really struggling to get them to uh, to become friends with them in, in a way. For someone who is uh, less experienced, maybe they don't even have the same uh, fears that, like I did. <laughs> um, but if they're less experienced, or someone who is getting, you know, going through this routine of just being around their animals, what should they know? before getting close to the cattle and eventually making that step because you do have to make that step eventually to get in with your cattle for some reason. Mm -hmm. uh, what do people have to know about working in close proximity to cattle? One thing about cattle is that they could test you. Once they figure out that you're anxious or nervous, they'll, <laughs> they'll try and test you. They'll, they'll be shaking their head. They'll, they'll try to get in your space especially the tame ones. Bulls are especially really bad for doing that. You get into a past, into a, a pasture. I mean, I've, I've had that experience where a bull had directly challenged me and uh, it was, it was terrifying. It was really scary, but um, I should probably tell that story because that's, that's yeah, a really, you, got, you can't just let that one go. No, we got to no. hear the bull story. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so, so what happened was that I was, if you want to hear Karen's scary bull story, it's a really good one. You don't want to miss it. It's coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and tune in tomorrow. And if it already is tomorrow, if this video has been out for a while, then you can probably click right here and watch it.